What's up, Buck? Doug Dini in the garage. Hey, did you guys know that the WJ, that's the Grand Cherokee from 99 to 04, came from the factory with two different types of brake calipers, ATE Tevas and Akebonos. And uh, what WJ owners have found over the years is that one is inherently better than the other. This is a WJ caliper. To be more specific, this was my WJ caliper until last weekend. Uh, I was driving to a mud event up in Warwick, New York with Eric and the family, the wife and kids and all that. When I got there, I got out of the Jeep and you could cook a steak on my front driver's side rim. Uh, this caliper had locked on, seized on, and the heat it was generating was crazy. This is a ATE TV style caliper. This is what they put on from 99 to 02 uh, on the Grand Cherokees. You can tell if you have a TV style caliper immediately by this wire. What this wire does is it holds the brake bracket and the actual caliper uh, together. Not holds them together, it, it, it takes out some of the, uh, the slack behind them, kind of holds everything tight in the system. Now this caliper is inherently worse than the other style, which we'll look at in a minute. Uh, the moral of this story is I had to change this caliper in the parking lot. Caliper seized up along the way, probably from sitting all that time. And we changed it to an Akebono style caliper. Um, same price and it's just inherently better. This is the Akebono style caliper. I gotta apologize for the wind noise. I can't control the weather and this WJ doesn't fit in the garage so we gotta just be at the mercy out here. This is the Akebono style caliper. You'll notice immediately it has no wire clip thing around the outside to take the slack up. The pads are also different too. If you've ever gone to the store to buy WJ pads and you get home and realize they're the wrong ones, what probably happened was they gave you Akebono and you had TVs or vice versa. This is an inherently better caliper, right? We're gonna go back in the garage and talk about why. The first reason why the Akebono is better than the earlier TVs is this wire brake clip itself, all right? These are a little bit difficult to put on sometimes, um, and sometimes they fall off, especially in off-road uh, applications. You hear all the time about guys losing these on the trail. Nothing catastrophic happens, but you do end up with play in your brake system. You never want play in your brake system. That is compounded by the next reason that this caliber type is worse than the Akebono that I have in my Jeep now. They don't handle bigger tires well. The extra weight of those tires uh, overpowers these brakes and it leads to excessive heat in the brake caliper and in the rotor. Well, what does excessive heat in your rotor cause? causes warping, all right? So if you have a WJ and your front rotors continually are warping after 5,000 miles, 10,000 miles, whatever, it may be because you have TV style brake calipers that are causing excessive heat in the rotor and causing them to warp. That's the biggest complaint that people get. Um, another problem, you know, this is all kind of compounding here. So they cause excessive heat, that causes your rotor to warp, if you have a lifted WJ and there's a little bit of play in your uh, steering system, in your, your suspension linkage, um, a warped rotor can trigger death wobble. You hear, I hear all the times, I got a really great video on death wobble, card up in the corner if you want to check it out. People ask me all kinds of questions on there, they'll say, hey man, my death wobble happens every time I hit the brakes. And I say, well, you probably have a warped rotor. That little bit of warble in your rotor when you hit the brakes can trigger death wobble. Uh, so all around, all these things are little issues. The clip comes off, excessive heat, warped rotors, but they come together to make this just not a good rotor for a Jeep. That's all there is to it, or excuse me, not a good caliper for a Jeep. It can't handle what we put our Jeeps through, and it kind of plays with the other inherent issue in Jeeps, and that is that they get death wobble. You got a solid front axle, death wobble is possible. So let's get on to the, the upgrade, the swap. What's involved? How do you go from TVs to Akimbono? It's simple. You go and buy Akimbono brakes. That's all I did, all right? I was sitting in a parking lot, dead in the water. Eric went out to the closest parts store when we were in that parking lot. He went and got me an Akimbono caliper. In fact, right now I have a TVs on one side and an Akimbono on the other because I haven't gotten around to fix it. It's a direct bolt-in. They have the same mounting points. They do use different pads, but they use the same rotor. All you have to do, all you have to do. It's just like replacing any other caliper. You take off the banjo here, you put it on the new one, you bolt your new caliper onto the knuckle with the same bolts, everything, all right? Direct swap, and it's a good swap. Now, it's kind of expensive if there's nothing wrong with your calipers, uh, so even though it is a better caliper, I don't know if I'd suggest you run out and do it right now, but if your caliper goes, that might be a really good time 
to switch up to the Akin Bonos. They're the same price, pads are the same price, but the pads last longer, they don't rust war uh, warp rotors, and they handle off-road uh, modified Jeeps a little bit better than the TVs do. All right, if you have any more questions about either of these two caliper types, by all means, leave me a comment down there in the squawk boxes. Let me know if you have any experience with either of the two types. My understanding is that it's universal. WJ guys know Akin Bona better than TVs. If one of your uh, TVs goes, you upgrade to Akin Bona. That's all there is to it, all right? Thanks for watching. See you next time.